church. <clears throat> it's a place of love and grace and hope and perseverance. God invites us to be part of a beloved community. God invites us to share the good news. If you're worshiping from home tonight, please hit an emoji button and let us know you're there. If you can find a Santa or a Merry Christmas emoji, even better. <laughs> so, and um, for those in the sanctuary, please take a moment to greet those around you. So we can be still and wonder at the brilliance of this world, of the sacred all around us. Tonight, we sit in, among the reflection of the lights, of the lights of Christmas. You have, <clears throat> you have likely had some Christmas lights up at home for a while, and you've seen the lights decorating the houses and the stores in the neighborhoods. Shining lights this time of year seem to help soften our focus a bit. They allow us to see the ordinary places and people lit up in the reflections. Even our houses can feel special with the trees' lights illuminating the room in a, in a magical way. I hope you had a few, a few moments to stop and notice and take it in. Times of quiet contemplation are not just good for the soul, they're also good for your whole being and our being with each other. And so, let us begin worship again with settling in and slowing down for just a moment. So I'm going to invite you to get comfortable where you are. And instead of closing your eyes tonight, 
I want you to look around the sanctuary and I want you to find one detail here in this room or if you're worshiping with us from home in the room that you are in. It could be a light. It could be one of the candles. It could be the stained glass window. It could be the mirror, the poinsettias. If there are other senses that are better for you, then listen or touch or smell. There are many ways to drink in a moment deeply. So I want you to take a deep, intentional breath in and out. Take a moment to settle in. And now gently shift your attention to something else. Or simply let your eyes wander and take in more and more details that perhaps you didn't notice when you first came in. Or if you're at home, notice the things that are so ordinary that you've stopped noticing them. What colors are getting your attention? What lights? Continue to use your senses intentionally, marveling at the things that you notice. Now focus on one light out of all the lights here in the sanctuary and where you are. Let this reflection of light be an anointing of insight for seeing your own journey through the lens of the sacred. Continue to just breathe and listen and see with your heart. of Advent and Christmas come into our midst. For those worshiping online, you're invited to light whatever candles you have available. We pray for hope this night. open our 
ourselves to see the sacred reflected in all things. We open ourselves to see the gift of the Holy Presence. This is the gift of the Christ mystery, lighting the way to peace. Living God, Christ mystery, Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for this holy sensing of your presence. As we take in the light you offer, may we be a reflection of that light, expanding the sacred being of this place into the sacred being of all things. Amen.
It is not difficult to imagine this night as reflecting the sacred. We gather together, we sing, and we light candles, and we dare to believe that love truly enters the world time and time again. And anything is possible. What may be more difficult to understand, however, is that this love is not ours because we've been good, but simply because we are beloved. We are beloved children of God. Our very being reflects the sacred. The incarnation of God in human flesh is proof. So let us hear the story of our Lord and Savior. Let us hear the story of Jesus' birth tonight. And we're going to hear it through carols and lessons. You are welcome to stand when it's time to sing or sit if you would like. It is up to you on how you want to take in the story. But we begin with a little town of Bethlehem. to participate in a massive census, the first census since Quirinius had become governor of Syria. Each person had to go to his or her ancestral city to be counted. Mary's fiancé, Joseph, from Nazareth in Galilee, had to participate in the census in the same way everyone else did. Because he was a descendant of King David, his ancestral city was Bethlehem, David's birthplace. Mary, who was now late in her pregnancy that the messenger Gabriel had predicted, accompanied Joseph. While in Bethlehem, she went to, into labor and gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped the baby in a blanket and laid him in a feeding trough because the inn had no room for them.
bring good news, news of great joy, news that will affect all people everywhere. Today, in the city of David, a liberator has been born for you. He is the promised anointed one, the supreme authority. You will know you have found him when you see a baby wrapped in a blanket lying in a feeding trough. At the moment, the first heavenly messenger was joined by thousands of other messengers, a vast heavenly choir. They praised God.
After they saw the baby, they spread the story of what they had experienced and what had been said to them about this child. Everyone who heard their story couldn't stop thinking about its meaning. Mary, too, pondered all of these events, treasuring each memory in her heart. The shepherds returned to their flocks, praising God for all they had seen and heard, and they glorified God for the way the experience had unfolded, just as the heavenly messenger had predicted. <clears throat> to stand and sing what child is this. children to come up. of things that we've been doing this this season as we're leading up to Christmas and as I say something I want you guys to make reindeer antlers if you've done what I'm the thing that I list okay you guys can do the same thing and we'll see who has more antlers going here all right you guys ready how many of you have been busy with choir concerts or, or band concerts. Uh-huh. Yeah, we got a few of those going. Okay. How about parties? Anybody been to a Christmas party? Mm. How about baking? Did anybody bake cookies? I happen to do that because I baked today. No. Um, how about decorating the tree? No. Yeah. How about shopping? Mm-hmm. How about wrapping presents? Yeah. 
How about getting the house ready so when your relatives come over, they think it really is clean this way all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a whole lot of doing. And so often we think that these are the things we have to do because we believe that's important to get ready for Christmas so that we can get Christmas right. But here's the deal. We aren't human doings. What are we? We're human beings, right? And we can't earn God's love based on what we do. God loves us because we belong to God. We aren't worthy of belonging in this sacred community because of what we do, but because each one of us is cherished. Each one of us is made in God's own image. We are human beings. So tonight, if you, well, you, you guys have been with us pretty much throughout the Advent, so you know that Miss Gala has done some call and response with you guys each week. So we're going to do another one. And this one is called the Litany of the Human Being. And um, I'm going to say my part. And your part tonight is I am a human being. Can you say that? A little louder. I am a human being. All right. Can y'all say that? All right. Okay. So as you say that, I invite you to pat your heart three times. I am a human being. Okay. Here we go. Your grades do not define you. I am a human being. Your bank account does not show your worth. I am a human being. Your trophies are not a measure of your success. I am a human being. Your likes on social media can't begin to show you how much you are loved. I am you are a child of hope, a child of love. You are a child of joy, a child of peace. You are a child of blessing, a child of God. You are the very reflection of the light of Christ. So, we can spend so much time running around trying to make Christmas happen if we only have the perfect meal, right? Or the perfect gift, or sing the perfect carol, or pray the perfect prayer. But guess what? The good news of our faith is that Christmas happens regardless of what we do. It doesn't matter how much we plan, how much we do, how much running around we, we do to try to make everything perfect. It's not about what we do. You see, because God's love is perfect, so we don't have to be perfect. God's love is perfect. It's simply enough for us to be, to be the human being that God created us to be. Amen? All right. You guys want to say a quick prayer with me? All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for creating us and for loving us and for not depending on us to make things perfect. We thank you for your perfect love. Amen. So we have heard the familiar story of the birth of Jesus through the scripture lessons tonight and through the carols. And as we know that in the ancient world, stories of important people often included remarkable or unusual birth stories. But my brothers and sisters, this is more than just an unusual birth story. This is the story of the mystery of our faith, a story in which we stand in awe, the presence of the Christ right here, right now, born constantly within all of creation from the very beginning, 
We've spent the season of Advent exploring sacred, reflecting the sacred in time, space, persons, in sacred knowing in that peace that is God's shalom. And tonight, we examine reflected this, reflecting the sacred in sacred being. So as you look around the sanctuary, you may notice a few, few mirrors. We've got one up here and a couple off on the chapel side, and there were some in the, in the welcome center. But I want to share with you tonight a, a special item that belonged to my grandmother. It's a beautiful angel that when you place it in the window and the sun shines through it, it reflects and refracts the sunlight that shines in. And beautiful rainbows are scattered all across my cabinets and my floor and my walls. And while the sunlight is warm and inviting, the brilliance of colors that explode when the light shines through cannot help but make me smile with joy. When the light shines through, I can't help but smile in soft remembrance of my grandmother's love. When the light shines through, I can't help but smile as I am reminded that Jesus is the light of the world. Amen? Amen. The core message of sacred being and of our faith narrative makes it very clear that Jesus redeems, Jesus saves. We do not earn our salvation through good works. We don't have to be royalty. We don't have to ride a white horse or be free of pain to be worthy of hope, of love, of joy, of peace. For that, my brothers and sisters, is your birthright as a child of God. Your DNA is filled with God. You are part of the light of the world that glints and shines as it reflects and refracts. Have you ever noticed, what we use the phrase, Jesus is the light of the world. That, that's something that is very common, particularly this time of year. But have you ever noticed in the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus also applies the same phrase to us. He says, you are the light of the world. This is when he is talking to the disciples about being salt and light. So not only is Jesus the light of the world, but by virtue of being a child of God, by virtue of being a follower of Jesus Christ, we also are to be the light of the world. We are part of the light of love, the light of mercy, the light of hope, the light of peace, the light of joy that our Lord and Savior brings. Tonight, tonight we will share in the sacrament of Holy Communion, and we will do this together as a community of faith. We will be in communion with Christ, where we may be the body of Christ. Listen for those words in our liturgy of the table. On the commemoration of the birth of Christ this night, may we be the baby in the manger in need of being wrapped in love, sustenance, and comfort. May we be the body of Christ as those who are called to respond to these needs, to love our neighbor, feed the hungry, comfort the grieving, and may we be the body of Christ who suffers just as all suffer and who rise from death, dealing, death dealing powers to find new life. This, my brothers and sisters, is the Christ mystery in full effect reflected all around us in the human and divine dance of suffering and joy, of giving and receiving. You see, we are not alone. We are the body of Christ together. So our good news of great joy, we've got several tonight, right? One, we don't have to earn our salvation. Nothing we do can earn salvation. And together we are 
the body of Christ, the hands and feet. We are the light of the world as part of Jesus being the light of the world. Amen? Amen. I invite you, I invite you to, to soak that in for a minute and really consider what it means to be the light of the world. How can we be the light of love, the light of hope, the light of joy, the light of peace in our families, in our neighborhoods, at our jobs, and in the world beyond our immediate? So I, I encourage you to, to take that nugget home with you tonight and think about how, as we look to the new year, how we can truly shine the light of love that Christ has for us for the rest of the world. to all and you are invited to partake. The only requirement is a sincere heart. The only barriers to the table are created in our own hearts. So we come together as a people to confess our sins to God. We confess because we do fall short of God's plan for perfect love. We don't make a confession to avoid punishment, but we confess to free our own hearts and minds so that the barriers that would be between us and our God and our brothers and sisters, so that they may be removed. So join me now in this prayer of confession. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We go about our lives as is Christmas is an event to be celebrated, but not lived. We hear the good news, but do not heed it. We turn away from the Holy Family, for there is no room in our hearts. We hear the cry of the expectant mother, desperate for care and a place to lie, but listen instead to the carols. We see the lowly children born in mangers among the filth of the world. But we look instead to the decorations. We hear the call of the angels to come and worship the newborn king, but we bow down to the idols of our culture. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us and free us for joyful obedience. Remove the barriers that we construct and empower us to be a people doing the real, gritty, holy, graceful, loving work of Christmas every day. Amen. God's love knows no bounds, and love comes down at Christmas, a love so deep and so profound that nothing will ever be the same. Know that this love has come for you, to touch you, to heal you, to forgive you, to make you whole. And all of God's people say, Amen. We praise God. We praise God with our offerings and tithes. <clears throat> We give these gifts and thanks for pure, unbounded love, wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Jesus, God incarnate, a gift so great to share that it could not be contained. 
With joy and our hearts overflowing and unending praise, you're invited to place your offering in the, in the box at the back of the church. Or if you're worshiping with us online, you may mail in an offering or give electronically through the church's website. Let us now gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. <laughs> Thanksgiving. So the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there they found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of woman on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread. He gave you thanks. He broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, again he gave thanks, and then he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, 
we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one with in ministry to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all glory and honor is yours almighty father now and forever and all of God's people say Amen. Amen. As you kindle the light of Christ in our hearts, so that we may share it with the world, we come this evening to have that light renewed. In the same way that you move through the upper room, we pray that you would move through this place tonight. Glorify God by bringing <clears throat> this story to life in the bread and the cup we share. May it be the bond between heaven and earth that brings peace and goodwill to all men and all people. With the joy of Christmas, we join our voices together in the familiar words of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite our communion stewards to come forward. table is set. Come, come partake.
us pray. Oh, holy God, we thank you. Our hearts are humbled this evening as we encounter the sacred. The sacred in sharing together as a community of faith, coming to be your body that was given in sacrifice for us. And we are so thankful, God. We thank you. Amen. All Advent season, we've been marking um, the sacred with sacred time, sacred people, sacred places. And we've been marking that with the idea of anointing which is the literal meaning of the word Christ, anointed one. We believe the sacred is reflected in and through each of us. All people are sacred. We know this because God became one of us, became human. So right now, I invite you to remember and to embrace that you are part of this story of hope, love, joy, and peace this night and to shine the light of Christ brightly for all to see. And we are going to do that tonight by lighting our candles. So I invite you to grab your candles. And we are going to take a light from the Christ candle. And I'm going to share it with you. Now there's a couple of logistics with this. If you have the flame, Hold your candle straight up and down. Don't, don't turn it because the wax will go all over the place. When you pass the light to your neighbor, the person who's taking the light takes their candle to the side. You got that? So you are invited to share the light of Christ as we sing. No. 
ankle, when you catch a reflection in the mirror, when you notice the sunlight dancing on a surface, a nightlight glowing in the darkness, or the flicker of the candlelight tonight. Let these be signs that Christ's light is revealed again and again in and throughout our world. Know that your brilliant presence is pouring out more light into the weary world. You are the light of the world. God loved us by becoming one of us, and this means that we, as being created in God's image, reflect the sacred. Let us join together in our closing song with voices lifted high and loud as we sing Joy to the World. <laughs> Thank you.